Praise the Lord. Welcome back, saints and seekers of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you for joining me. We have been reading in the book of Acts, and we are continuing with that. We are to Acts chapter 12, and uh, we will see heavy persecution again. We saw in uh, chapter 6 or 7, Stephen martyred the first martyr. Well, we are about to have another martyr and um, um, we will see how that goes. We will just see persecution, but we will also see the delivering hand of the Lord as he wills and he undertakes, and it's his timing for what is happening when he is sovereign over the events. Chapter 12 of Acts now about that time, Herod the king stretched forth his hands to vex certain of the church, and he killed James, the brother of John, with the sword. And because he saw it please the Jews, he proceeded further to take Peter also. Then were the days of unleavened bread. And when he had apprehended him, he put him in prison and delivered him to four quaternions of soldiers to keep him, intending after Easter to bring him forth to the people. So he is made sure in the natural, Peter is very secured by guards, that we serve a supernatural God that's going to send rescue to Peter. Verse 5, Peter therefore was kept in prison, but prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him. And when Herod would have brought him forth the same night, Peter was sleeping between two soldiers, bound with two chains. And the keepers before the door kept the prison. So get a visual of that. Peter is uh, chained to two soldiers. He's sleeping between them. <laughs> They're going to make sure he doesn't go anywhere, and there's keepers before the door besides that. But God, verse 7, And behold, the angel of the Lord came upon him, and a light shined in the prison, and he smote Peter on the side and raised him up, saying, Arise up quickly, and his chains fell off from his hands. And the angel said unto him, Gird thyself, and bind on thy sandals. And so he did. And he saith unto him, Cast thy garment about thee, and follow me. And he went out, and followed him, and wist not that it was true, which was done by the angel, but thought he saw a vision. So he's been <laughs> awakened from a sleep in prison, and uh, everything has happened so quickly. You know how disoriented you are when you wake up sometimes anyway, and then all of these events are happening quickly. The angels hit him and told him to get his clothes on, and the chains have fallen off, and the angels uh, telling him to follow him. Verse 10. So Peter's thinking, okay, we're in a vision here evidently. Verse 10. When they were past the first and the second ward, they came into the iron gate that leadeth unto the city, which opened to them of his own accord. And they went out and passed on through one street, and forthwith the angel departed from him. So an angel he can see getting him out, but there's other angels evidently he can't see that are opening gates, and there's chains falling off, and they're just uh, doing all this with the guards staying asleep and not even knowing what's going on. Verse 11, And when Peter was come to himself, he said, Now I know of a surety that the Lord hath sent his angel and hath delivered me out of the hand of Herod and from all the expectation of the people of the Jews. And when he had considered the thing, he came to the house of Mary, the mother of John, whose surname was Mark, where many were gathered together praying. And as Peter knocked at the door of the gate, a damsel came to hearken named Rhoda. And when she knew Peter's voice, she opened not the gate for gladness, but ran in and told how Peter stood before the gate. <laughs> we do interesting things when we're overcome, don't we? It really sounds like something I would do. Verse 15, And they said unto her, Thou art mad. But she constantly affirmed that it was even so. Then said they, It is his angel. 
And they're all fervently praying for his release. And when it's happened and he's at the door, they're like, well, okay, it's just his spirit out there. Verse 16. But Peter continued knocking. And when they had opened the door and saw him, they were astonished. But he, beckoning unto them with the hand to hold their peace, declared unto them how the Lord had brought him out of the prison. And he said, Go show these things unto James and to the brethren. And he departed and went into another place. So we've had one James that has been killed. That's the brother of John. And Peter is saying, uh, Go show this to the other James which I believe was the James that authored uh, James in the New Testament that was a half-brother to Jesus. Verse 18, Now as soon as it was day, there was no small stir among the soldiers what was become of Peter. And when Herod had sought for him and found him not, he examined the keepers and commanded that they should be put to death. So they were pretty serious about this. If they had prisoners and the guards didn't keep them in, that would cost them their life. So these keepers just got put to death. And he went down from Judea to Caesarea and their abode. So this is Herod we're talking about now. And Herod was highly displeased with them of Tyre and Sidon, but they came with one accord to him. And having made Blastus the king's chamberlain, their friend, desired peace because their country was nourished by the king's country. And upon a set day, Herod, arrayed in royal apparel, sat upon his throne and made an oration unto them. And the people gave a shout, saying, It is the voice of a God and not of a man. And immediately the angel of the Lord smote him, because he gave not God the glory. And he was eaten of worms and gave up the ghost. So we see incidences in this early church where God's not playing around with people. And uh, we may feel sometimes like we've gotten away with some things, but we haven't just because he doesn't smote us immediately. We better line up with his word, fear the Lord and be obedient because there is judgment day coming. And the word tells us he's, he's not making uh, special favors to anyone. We will be judged by the word. Verse 24, But the word of God grew and multiplied, and Barnabas and Saul returned from Jerusalem when they had fulfilled their ministry and took with them John, whose surname was Mark. So John Mark, it's a, a nephew, I believe, of Barnabas, and we'll later have him in an interesting little controversy with Paul at some point. But um, that is chapter 12 of Acts. And, uh, you know, I can remember thinking when I was uh, early living for the Lord and I would think about the days we're in now. I, you know, you knew they were coming and think about... Uh, I would sit and consider, well, if, if my life is going to be required of me, Lord, I don't know. I don't know how I may live for you all this time, and then when it gets really rough, I, I may just cave. I mean, if Peter caved on you, he's a far better person than I am, I'm sure. So, you know, I was just really wondering, how do you stand when it gets uh, to these times that we're in now? Because there are pastors sitting in prison now. <clears throat> and the only reason they're there is because of their faith. They may have trumped up charges on them, but they're in there because they believe in Jesus Christ, and there is a real um, agenda against Christians that is getting stronger and stronger. So we may naturally have some of those wonderings about things. Will I stand if it comes to it, if things get hard, if everything's taken away? And uh, your faith is sorely tested. You're wondering inside where the Lord is. Are you preparing in your spirit enough now to stand? Because if, if we can't stand strong in these times, if we're whining about things now, uh, it's, it's going to get a lot harder out there. So how are we going to stand? We're going to have to be built up in the spirit, aren't we? 
But you know, something that helped me, I got the Fox's Book of Martyrs. About the time I was asking the Lord about those things, how will I be able to stand for you, Lord? And um, when I got that Fox's Book of Martyrs, there was a place in there where they were talking about someone being burned at the stake. Well, how horrific is that in our minds? And uh, But the people that were witnessing this said they were praising the Lord. So just like Stephen, when he was being hit with those rocks, he was looking up and he was seeing Jesus at the right hand of the Father. He was just uh, seeing the glory. He was in the Spirit. And so the man being burned at the stake um, was in the Spirit. The Lord was surrounding him like he surrounded the Hebrew boys in that fiery furnace in the Old Testament. You know, those stories are given to us for examples of great faith that uh, when our faith isn't what it should be when we are faithless God is faithful the Lord will be with us he will sustain us if we've served the Lord and we've honored him and it has truly been in our heart to serve him the Lord's not going to let us fail him when things get harder I just wanted to share that. Maybe someone needed to hear it. God will not fail us. I love you. Jesus loves you more. If you need to give your heart to the Lord, Acts 2.38, obey it. Blessings on your day.